Don't mind me. Just giving myself a coffee steam facial. Good morning everybody! Welcome back to the Midweek Morning Show where we try to reset ourselves just in case Monday and Tuesday weren't the best. Why don't you grab some coffee, grab a breakfast, grab a blanket, and let's get started. This week's outfit consists of this lovely purple and black dress that my mother gave me from Macy's, a blazer that I got from Goodwill that I can kinda see why they donated because one of the flaps does not stay down, and this necklace was a gift to my best friend that she gave back to me, and that's okay, and I still love her. For today's treasure of the day, I wanted to show you one of the first cards I ever got from a student. This is a card made from one of my very first students. When I was in my junior year of college, I needed to find an internship. I didn't like anything that I saw available. Every internship that I saw was sitting in front of a computer creating some bland, lifeless, soulless type of design for printer labels or for advertising. When I stumbled upon an ad that said, teach art to adults with special needs, I got extremely curious and just decided to give it a try. The educational center that I interned at was in the Sunland Hills and it had a farm where everyone that was there harvested eggs from the chickens and used them to make breakfast. It had art classes and dance classes and computer skills classes and it was primarily a facility for adults with special needs. And I taught all types of people from those with cerebral palsy to autism to Down syndrome to just, just a whole rainbow of different things. From there I discovered that I have a really big passion for teaching adults with special needs. And I wanted to share this card with you today because it's just beautiful. And like, do I know what it says? No. <laughs> but that doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna read this card to you in the same way that I would read a text from my mother. <laughs> Dramatically, but accurate. <laughs> Simic I Womer, Shimni Hagur the Sun, a flows pink rose. Astis sky blue his fear, Rusu flower's sun are pink flower colon. Love you, I will you me flowers. I love you. It's perfect, it's beautiful. I love everyone that I've ever taught. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about part of my life as a traveling portrait artist. And I don't know if the title of this video alludes to something different, but I promise it all ties in. As some of you know, between 2016 and 2018, I was struggling a lot financially. I was almost evicted, my car was repossessed, there was a lot going on. And one of the things that I did to get out of my situation was get three jobs. And I don't think anyone should have to do that in order to afford an $800 apartment, but I'm not in control of the economy, so. <laughs> one of those three jobs was because a traveling portrait artist, which sounds weird, right? Like, I would think that that job would be something from a whole different time period. I saw an ad on Craigslist in 2017 asking for a portrait artist that could draw a portrait in under five minutes while talking to guests. And I was like, Sounds weird, let's go. When I interviewed for the job, I was very eager and there was sweat dripping out of a lot of different places because I really needed this job. <laughs> and during the interview, I found out that we were going to be drawing the portraits on iPads using Apple pencils. I was asked to demonstrate my skills to the boss using one of the iPads in front of her and it was not intuitive. I did not perform very well. I guess I wasn't the worst one because I still got the job. <laughs> and because of this job, I've also gotten to travel to places like Las Vegas, Colorado, San Francisco, and most recently, Houston, Texas. I got to see Main Street in Houston and see all of the beautiful brick roads and stay at a lovely hotel and draw portraits at a soccer game. It's this really wonderful and surprisingly challenging job that I hope to keep for some time. But I wanted to talk about this because upon seeing my work next to the work of all of my peers consistently for the last two years, I have come to the objective realization that I am nowhere near as good at this particular thing 
as the rest of my peers. To give you an idea, the rest of my peers at this job are either A, digital artists, or B, caricature artists. They are incredibly used to drawing digitally, drawing with Apple pencils or drawing with their tablets. They are used to doing things in a short amount of time and they are used to stylizing people to look a certain way. And me, all of my artistic skill goes in like the opposite direction. <laughs> like I can do that. <laughs> It took me some time to really grapple with the idea that I am not on the same level as my peers because in any setting where there has been art involved, whether it's at work, whether it's in class or in my life, I have never been the worst. Honestly, I've always been one of the top. <laughs> so this is a whole new world for me. <laughs> I've been trying really hard to deal and redirect the insecurity that not being the best at something comes with because a lot of my worth for a lot of my life has been rooted in how well I can draw. And there's gonna be times in your life as well when you're not good at something and you just have to deal with that. <laughs> I didn't deal with this very well at first. <laughs> I kept trying to get better with this shadow of self-loathing over my head, even at events themselves. For example, I found myself trying to change my style in the middle of an event where I was drawing just so I could have some chance of the work maybe looking like that of my peers. And it never went over well because I was trying to do a style that was completely foreign to me. I was too busy scattering myself among everyone else's different approaches instead of investing time in creating my own. Now I'm investing time in trying to figure out what my own five minute portrait style is. And although I've got a long ways to go, I at least feel a lot better about the fact that I'm not beating myself up over not being perfect. If you're like me and you feel really bad about yourself when you realize you're not the best at something or when you feel really behind everyone else, here are some tips in order to deal with that feeling. One, try to find some inspiration without comparing yourself. It's okay to get inspired by what a colleague did without beating yourself up for the fact that you didn't come up with it first. Number two, focus on progress, not perfection. For example, I found a new brush today that I really liked. Progress. Number three, until you get your work to the place where you actually want it to be, be proud of yourself anyway. Act proud of your work and you'll find that other people will mimic your opinion and be proud of it too. <laughs> the more you talk about the negatives of any aspect of your life, the more other people are gonna see those negatives and focus on them. This week, I challenge you to be nicer to yourself when you realize that you still have a long way to go in whatever it is you might be pursuing. A lot of creative people tend to put all of their self-worth into their work, and that's not healthy. Your worth is not rooted in perfection. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will see you on Friday, and I hope that you have a lovely week. Goodbye.